Hi, Vic via ENT Surgeon. Now, I want to do a quick video about tonsillectomy operations because I've heard an awful lot of misconceptions from patients about it. The first one I've noticed is that a lot of people say to me, well, don't you meant to eat sort of soft food like ice cream, jelly, soup and things like that for two weeks because I'm worried about bleeding. Now, actually, we found that the more recent research shows that if you have soft food, jelly, ice cream and things like that, like we used to say in the past, the risk of bleeding actually increases. So there's a higher risk, typically about seven, eight days down the line, that you bleed so much that you have to come into hospital by ambulance, have an operation with a night, or have a transfusion just to sort of stem the bleeding and deal with the problem. But if, on the other hand, you ate hard food like toast and pizza and things like that, it actually scratches off that white stuff you see at the back of your throat. We found that it actually reduces the risk of bleeding after this operation. And also, we think it reduces the pain as well. Although it hurts when you first put that stuff in your mouth, actually it uses those muscles at the back of your throat so it doesn't hurt so much afterwards because you're not getting into a cramp with the throat. So you have to start eating as soon as possible. And also, it's because it's scratching off that white stuff, it allows the skin or what we'd call the mucosa at the back of the throat to heal over that area. So it doesn't hurt for such a long time after this operation. So the newer research so shows that you have to eat normal food or even hard food to keep the mouth clean, to allow it to heal quickly enough. Now, another thing I've heard is that people worry that taking out tonsils somehow affects their immune system. And we've heard this for many, many years. In the past, they said that, oh, taking out tonsils causes a bad complications from polio. It causes Hodgkin's lymphoma. It causes, oh, what's the other ones? Um, chest infections, asthma, all sorts of things. And actually, they've all been disproven. Uh, it, there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that taking out tonsils somehow makes you more susceptible to getting infection. And another thing to mention is that people normally grow out of their tonsils and adenoid problems because they shrink in size during puberty. And so by the time you, you become an adult, you no longer really have them. They become a bit of fibrous tissue at the back of your throat. Again, pointing to away from the fact that they're somehow help your immune system. You shouldn't really have tonsils and adenoids as an adult. You can't really see them. And a lot of people don't realize this. They think, oh, I've always got tonsils. And if they look in their mouth, they see these huge tonsils. And actually, as an adult, that's unusual to have big tonsils. I've never had my tonsils out and I can't see my tonsils at all. Like a thymus, that normally disappears with time. And we know that removing the thymus doesn't really affect their uh, people's immune system, even as, at six months old or even six days old. I'll tell you more about it if you want to. If you want to know more about this, I've written this book. That's a cheeky plug for this book. But you can get if you look on the description below, you can buy that as a digital format if you want. The other thing I've noticed is that people do have problems thinking that having a tonsil operation as a child is safer than when you have it as an adult. And actually, that's not true. It is slightly quicker to have a, um, a tonsillectomy operation as a child. It only takes about five, sort of eight minutes to remove your tonsils. But as an adult, it does take longer, the actual operation, maybe up to 15 minutes or so. But it's actually safer to have it as an adult because there's a greater circulating volume. There's more blood in your system. So if I or another adult lost a pint of blood because of a terrible bleed after an operation, well, then so what? But if a four-year-old child who has a very small circulating volume or blood, blood supply, if he loses a pint of blood, that's quite worrying. And that's why it's safer almost to have it as an adult. It can be more painful if you've had quinzies and other things like that, which I'll talk about in that book, but uh, I won't go into that sort of detail. Now, this next thing about the different types of tonsil operation and which one is the best. I mean, there's laser, there's coblation, there's cold steel, bipolar, microdebrider. Now, that's our fault. We've made it much more complicated and difficult to understand, uh, which I prefer extracapsular versus intracapsular. It is difficult and we all have our own techniques which we believe are the most uh, useful or the best. And they've all got their pros and cons. Some cause more bleeding but slightly less pain in the first day or so and so on and so forth. So it's really important to understand what each type of technique is useful for in what situation. And the other thing is that a lot of people worry that uh, taking out tonsils, that's not going to do anything for my obstructive sleep apnea or my snoring and things like that, but actually it does. But you've got to be careful because taking out tonsils in the wrong manner can cause snoring when you're older, or at least that's what I believe. If you look at the, the muscles at the back of the throat around where the tonsils are, if you damage one of those muscles, I've seen an awful lot of people later on in life 
uh, where they start snoring because the palate sort of uh, regresses backwards. Now, I do appreciate that a lot of people are concerned about the amount of pain that they're going to experience after this operation, and it's an important consideration. Uh, I've got loads of different sort of uh, ways of trying to reduce the pain, reducing the cramp at the back of the throat, the spasm in your throat muscles, when to take your painkillers, what painkillers to take. Opiates aren't so good, whereas the NSAIDs are much better if you take them in the right way. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff about it. But taking the using the techniques which are uh, reputably less painful also have its own um, disadvantages because the pain or the problems that they originally had may come back again because if you only remove say 90 percent or 95 percent of the tonsil and you leave a slither of a tonsil behind so you don't have so much pain in the first day or so then there is a risk unfortunately, of about a 5 to 10% chance of it growing all the way back again or having repeated infections. So as I said, there are advantages and disadvantages of not removing them, using a different technique over another in, in, a, in an attempt to try and reduce the amount of pain. And I just want to leave you with one little other fact as well, because we have lots of different tonsils that a lot of people don't seem to realize. We've got the palatine tonsils, which are left and right, which everyone remembers as being tonsils. And you've got the adenoids, which is the bit at the back of your nose, the part of your nose. And that area there has actually got two other tonsils next to it called the tubal tonsils, the ones that go right next to the uh, passage that goes from your ear to your nose, the one where you blow your nose and you pop your ears on an aeroplane. Right next to there, there is another set of tonsils sitting there. There's also a tonsil sitting down the back of your tongue. So if you put your fingers down your throat and try to make yourself vomit, there's another tonsil there called the lingual tonsil. Uh, and a lot of people don't know this one and people seem not to care, but there's a, down the side of your throat, there's another one called the lateral pharyngeal band, another set of tonsils as well. So that might be one of the reasons why removing tonsils which are chronically infected or the adenoids which can be so big that it can block your nose doesn't seem to affect people so much because you've also got the lingual tonsils, the tubal tonsils, the latropharyngeal bands as well. So that may be taking over some of the uh, other things that are going on in terms of immunity, sensing stuff that's uh, coming into your mouth and throat when you eat or breathe anything. Um, hope you found that useful. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye.